Okay, uh, good morning everyone. We'll start with the first session today. Svetoslav will explain us how to run applications in any cloud. So. Thank you. So today I'm gonna present you the Apache Brooklyn project. Uh, it's, it was started six years ago by CloudSoft and in 2014 it was donated to the Apache Software Foundation where it started its incubating period and in November 2015 it graduated as a top level project. So even though it's fairly new under the Apache head, it's been around for quite a while as an open source project. This is the uh, website of the project, the IRC channel where you can come and ask any questions you have, and the uh, repository where all, all the sources are. So what's Apache Brooklyn? Let me start with an example. Say you have the standard three-tier web application running somewhere in the cloud on virtual machines. You have say three web servers connected to a database which is backed up by another database. You have a load balancer in front of them, so that makes a total of, ho of five machines already. So you need first to create the infrastructure for them. Then you need to uh, create the database, so you have the URL send the URL to the web machines and notify the load balancer of the new nodes in the web cluster. So you have all these interconnected dependencies which once you create, once they are running, where the easy part ends, you need to manage them for the lifetime of your application. And that's how Brooklyn can, can help you. It uh, helps you to model your application and all of its requirements and apply them for the lifetime of your application. The focus is on the application. It's a first class concept. And <coughs> uh, you don't, you don't deal with the infrastructure so much as, as you are describing how your application should work. It's multi-cloud and uh, hybrid cloud, which means that if you have, uh, it means that you don't adapt your application to the infrastructure where it's running. You do, do the, the reverse. You create the machines you need, being a bare metal machines, virtual machines, containers, set the environment so it fits the application, not the other way around. You, you can target uh, any cloud machines in most of the existing clouds. You can use fixed IP machines. You can even use platform as a services, so there is no real virtual machine running there. This is the home page of the project where you see the three pillars of Brooklyn model, deploy, and manage. You start with an application blueprint where you describe your application and its behavior in the cloud. It's a normal text file or a collection of text files which you can uh, put alongside your normal ap application source code. So you can source control them and all the good stuff you do with your source code. So you take these text files and with one click you deploy them. You can do that through the web user interface, you can do that through the command line client, or you can just curl them through the REST API. So Brooklyn will take that blueprint, create the virtual machines, create the networks, set up any firewalls or whatever is needed, and then it will start 
autonomically manage them. So what does it actually that mean? What does it mean to autonomically manage an application? Brooklyn takes your blueprint and turns it into a live model of the runtime application topology. Anything that's managed is called an entity. So every entity has sensors which describe the state of the, say, process. If it has a current working director, if it has ports which are open, any metrics that you might be interested in, like request per second, anything that's interesting to your business case. So on the other side, you have the effectors, which are packaged blobs of behavior, of uh, actions, say resize action or restart action. You can mix and match all those together, so you can attach sensors to entities, you can attach effectors to entities, but what ties them together are the policies. That's where the management logic lives. Policies monitor the sensors and they subscribe to those sensors they are interested in and when they see that they need to take some action, they'll call the effectors. So policies monitor and take actions by calling the effectors. Right? So let me give you some more hands-on experience of the blueprint. What's an application blueprint? It's a YAML text file. YAML is a superset of JSON. It's very user friendly. You can really easily type what you mean, but if you really need to, you can express the same thing in JSON and it will just work. First, you start with some metadata about the blueprint, like the name, version, anything label any labels you might want to put in there uh, the blueprints are following the camp standard where you uh, express running services so under the services property you put any of the running nodes you need you can use existing blueprints and compo compose them, mix and match them, like you just take a database, you take a load balancer, you take a web server, put them in, configure them to your needs. Alternatively, if you have a more specific case or something that's very particular to your organization, you can use your existing scripts, bash receipt, uh, bash scripts, chef recipes, salt, ansible, anything that you already have, even Docker files. And when you have these separate entities, you need to wire them somehow. So Brooklyn is all about uh, adapting the cloud to the application. So. Uh, in case your application doesn't have service discovery, Brooklyn can provide that for you, and you can wire the entities with one another. So in this case, we have a couch-based cl couch cluster, and we are taking its URL and passing it to the bash server here. So once the couch-based server is up and running, when it has a sensor which present represents its URL, you it will be uh, passed to the bash server entity. Sometimes you have particular uh, requirements for how your entity should be running, like 
say MySQL needs a bit more RAM than a standard web application. So you can specify that in the entity. You can uh, express various things about what your target location needs to look like, like the operating system, disk space, etc. But all of this is based on the Java platform, so, so you can extend uh, and write new entities using Java classes, using OSGI. And the most important thing, as I already mentioned, are the policies. You attach policies which will monitor the sensors of the entities, and provide some actions. This example is an autoscaler, which monitors the request per second. And if needed, it will scale up or down the cluster based on these metrics. So if it goes, uh, if the request per second goes above 600 requ requests, it will add new nodes. If it goes under 400, it will remove nodes from the cluster. But all of this is independent of where that, that blueprint will be running. So you can specify the location separately. You can use all the big cloud providers. We are using the JClouds library as an abstraction around them. Also, you can use fixed IPs. You can use local clouds, you can use Docker containers, you can use even Vagrant while developing on your local box. And as I already mentioned, you can extend Brooklyn using Java. So what you can do if you need a very, if you have a very specific case which is not handled by the existing entities, you can just create your own implementation. So the quickest way is to use the Maven archetype we provide, which is the quick start project, create a wireframe from it. Essentially what it does is create a Maven project which has uh, OSGI configuration, so when you build your project, it will end up as a OSGI bundle, which can be inserted inside Brooklyn at runtime. So you can implement sensors which connect in a specific way to your entity and extract information, or it, you can connect to an existing monitoring service which already collects the data you, you need. You can create policies which do some business logic or just straight entities. And at the end, you combine all of that in a blueprint which I showed you. And here's an interesting example of why would you need to go that way. So the entity I'm going to show you is essentially an AC controller. It can control your AC in the building. What we have here is a Raspberry Pi, which has a, a, a temperature sensor, and also it has a couple of uh, relays which can control, which can be turned on or off through a REST API on the Raspberry Pi. And how it works is first you implement, you create the entity which will represent that piece of hardware. Here we have a couple of, of configurations, the host and port where the Raspberry Pi is responding. 
we have a sensor which represents the temperature which is measured on the device, and we have several effectors. One is relay off, relay on, and each one for the two relays on the board. So that's the overall description of the entity. We have an implementation as well, as well which implements the effectors. It's just, it just calls the REST API on the Raspberry Pi, and it will switch on or off the relays. And it will fetch the temperature from a specific URL. That's very lean. It's uh, really simple, so uh, you can quickly get the idea without getting bogged in much details. And so what we have right now is a way to read the temperature and to a way to flip the relays, but we need something to manage that that's expressed in the flip-flop policy. So it has, again, a configuration, a threshold, which is the temperature. If we go above a, s a predefined temperature, it will call this effector. If it goes below that, it will call this effector, and it's configurable. So you can say, I want you to call a specific effector. That's a very quick run through the code. But what ties that together is the blueprint. So first, you reference your OSGI bundle. Then you export the things that you have created. That's a catalog item which can be inserted in, in Brooklyn and can be used in another blue in other blueprints. So you take that and you can combine it in the application blueprint. So you tell the entity here's your host, here's the port it's listening on. And I want to attach this management policy, which is, which is the flip-flop policy. And if the temperature goes above 25 degrees, please call the relay on effector. If it goes below, please call the relay off effector. And the metric, so 25, is coming from this temperature sensor on the device entity. So you see it's really, uh, you can, mix and match functionality in a really generic way. And this also shows that you don't need to manage cloud machines with Brooklyn. You can manage anything that has a protocol. You can communicate through anything that you want to have running long term. Right. So, time for a demo, which is the classical cloud demo. Uh, resizing a cluster in a running application and doing some failure modes. I, I have a simple blueprint here. Let's go. Let's deploy it first, and I'll go through it while it's starting. So you just click deploy, and here it goes. Um, let's show it again. So we w we have a Jetty plus MySQL cluster demo. We have we want it to run in a Vagrant location, which is using my Vagrant on the local machine with a virtual box, so it's essentially turning that into my own local cloud. But I can run this anywhere else, so let's run it on IBM Blue Box. I should have changed the name, but anyway. Let's see which one is that. That's the... Uh, Blue box, so I'll change the name at runtime. Blue box. 
Blue Box is a cloud by IBM. And let's run another one in, say, Amazon. And see which starts first. Any bets? No? Let's see. OK, I already named the other one as well. This is the Vagrant, and this is the Amazon. Right. Let's get back to the blueprint and run through it. I'll start with the simple part, the MySQL database. It's just using the Brooklyn bundled MySQL entity. Uh, I am giving it a name. I am giving it a creation script, which is on my machine. It will get uploaded to the VM of the SQL database and run there. And since this script supposedly is very intensive, I want to give it some extra RAM because VirtualBox runs with 512 megabytes by default. So this will spin one box with MySQL. And to use that, we'll run another entity, which is a Jetty server, running this WAR file at the root context. And to bind it to the uh, MySQL database, since this is a very simple application, it doesn't do any uh, discovery, it just needs a URL to connect to a database. So I'm going to connect them by using whatever format it expects. It's expect expecting a uh, Java property, with which is named Brooklyn example DB URL, and which needs to point to the SQL database. So I'm dynamically building that through Brooklyn DSL in the YAML. I'm passing it a template of the URL, which is JDBC protocol. And I'm passing it the data store URL. That's a sensor on the MySQL. So as soon as you have an IP, and IPs in the cloud are dynamic, you can't know beforehand which IP you get. So you, we need to wait for the MySQL database to come up and then get its IP and port. And for brevity, I have fixed username and password here, which normally would exist in a vo secure vault somewhere outside of Brooklyn, outside of the disk. So you can say, please fetch this username, please fetch this password from this external location. But for brevity, I'm just hard coding them here. Next thing, policies. I want a restarter policy, which will monitor the failure sensor on the nodes. And if the node fails, it will try to restart it. It will first try to, it will restart the process. Next, we have failure detector. That's what actually is, uh, it's saying this entity failed, please do something, so the restarter will kick in. That's on the level of a single, single node. So you are monitoring a single node, and if something goes wrong, you try to restart the process. But if that fails for some reason, something is horribly broken on the machine, you go to the cluster, the level of the cluster. So here we have a cluster with an initial size of one node, whose members are actually the Jetty server. And we tell to the server, if something goes wrong with a node, please re replace it. So this will spin up a new machine, identical to the previous one, 
And once that's confirmed working, it will tear down the failed machine. Or if you prefer, you, you can keep it around for troubleshooting offline later. And finally, an auto scaler, <coughs> which will bring in new nodes or remove nodes from the cluster depending on the predefined metrics. So let's see what's going on here. Ooh, we have the local cloud <coughs> application already running. And let's see here. It's something's wrong here. Ooh. Failure. Jetty. Anyway, let's not delve into that. And this is yet starting. We have one machine up and Nginx and Jetty are yet to come. Uh, so let's first try to resize the cluster. We have an Nginx controller. Let's see if it's working, actually. That's the application. It's very basic application, which just, which just shows that there's a connection to the database. I add some record in it and confirm that it's still there. So yeah, it's working. And let's put some load on that application. It's against the Nginx controller. And I will scroll for that infinitely sleep for a while, and it will start fetching the URL. What happens is that the sensors on the cluster start picking that load up. So here we have per node, per second load, which is going above 5, which was the predefined metric in the YAML file. And here you see that it's already added another item to the cluster. So it's responding to the load. And while it's loading, let me show you around the UI. So each entity has some summary information, what, which is what's most important, like the catalog item it was created from, or the ID which you can use to manage it from the command line. Then there are, oh, first the configuration. So how do you, uh, the configuration contains any information that you might need to bring a uh, machine up so that one, if you destroy this machine and put a new one running, uh, all you need is this configuration which will, uh, based on it, you configure the new machine and the sensors which are coming from the entity, various information, any information that you need to have to make decisions on how the application should behave. Of course, for the demo, the most important one is the request per second. So as you see here, we have two nodes now. And the per node count dropped from five to two and something because the load will be balanced between the two nodes once they are up. Then we have effectors. That's the, the actions that you can apply on the entities. Uh, we have deploy, which where you just pass a WAR file. We have resize, restart, undeploy. So you have effectors that are specific to the machines, like restart. You have effectors that are specific to the entity, like, like deploy war file, undeploy war file. And these are tied by the policies. Here we have an auto scaler policy and the service replacer policy. This will monitor the members of the cluster. If something goes wrong, they'll call resize or downsize whatever is needed. And the activity is where you can look into the internals and see what's going on. So 
we just started an entity, it provisioned on a vagrant location, it started, which includes installing some lots of stuff. You can see uh, the actual SSH commands that are getting executed. As you can guess, that's auto-generated. And uh, so you have pretty good idea of what's going on under the hood. And uh, here's the place to note that Brooklyn doesn't have agents on the machines. It's doing everything through various channels, like SSHing to the machines, getting sensors, installing stuff, uh, HTTP sensors, which just connect to the through a REST API, GMX, and so on, whatever fits your application. So yeah, we already have another entity in the cluster. So let's stop the load and watch that drop. Yeah, we got. The, uh, we see that immediately here. So one of the nodes should go down any second because we don't need it anymore. Here we go. So you don't actually worry about where is my machine running, what network it has on it. What you worry about is the application. That's what brings business value to the company. Uh, as long as it's healthy, you don't care about what network it's running on, what virtualization technology it's using. You describe the application, its topology, and Brooklyn will keep it healthy. That's the entity gone. So let's try to break that. Now let's cache into the machine. Um, and just kill Jetty. So the process is gone now. And you can see immediately that something is wrong. But you don't need to take any action because we already configured that in the blueprint. So immediately, uh, we see that something's wrong. Uh, Brooklyn goes into the machine and tries to restart the process. But that's not enough in this case, because something is horribly broken. And it goes out again. Brooklyn notices that. But this time, it's configured that if the process dies repeatedly within a window of time, then it will assume that it's something's not right with this machine. So better not use it. Let's spin another one and replace the failing machine. So with this happening, it's updating the controller in the background, the service loader, which will notice that we have a new node up. And these are just stock Nginx Jetty applications. They don't, again, they don't have service discovery. They, they don't know about each other. It's Brooklyn that's controlling them, updating them, making sure that dependencies are met, that each node notes about the rest. And Let's wait for this to spin up. We can see inside what the progress is. It's still creating a new machine. And it just did that. And it will continue installing Java on it here. And then set up Jetty, reconfigure it with the same WAR file we are using on the other nodes, and add it to the cluster. All right, so n l let's not wait for it. We'll come back later. How do you write your blueprints? Where do you get the entities? 
Brooklyn comes with a number of entities, the most widely used applications. You can learn about them from the website. You go to the Learn More tab, and then there's a list of catalog items that are already pre-baked in the Brooklyn distribution. If that's not enough for you, then we have the community catalog. That's where I showed you the flip-flop AC controller. Anybody can, add, can create a blueprint, either a text YAML blueprint or a Java, a more specific one, and add it to the community catalog where others can use it freely. We also have some additional integrations, like with Apache Ambari blueprints, Apache Spark blueprints. There's a Maven plugin which can help you either test integration, test your blueprints against a Ring Maven instance, or alternatively help you create the infrastructure which you need for your tests. So, so you can integrate the infrastructure creation and destroy destruction inside your test workflow. There's also a Cloud Foundry service broker, which exports, uh, it lets the Cloud Foundry users, which is platform as a service, uh, use any entities, any blueprints running inside Brooklyn. And to add to that, you can also use Docker containers, just as you can use any other cloud. So you can use Docker images inside your blueprints. That's the Clocker project, which is just another Brooklyn blueprint. It's, it adds the functionality of uh, containers to it. So you can use any Docker image inside your blueprints and uh, integrate them with the other entities. Or you can do the reverse. You can start any Brooklyn entity inside a container. The, entity, the application doesn't need to know that it's running inside a container. But if you want to run it inside one, you can do that quickly. Um, and I can show you how that works. So here we have the failed JT entity already removed from the cluster, and it's all healthy. And here I have another Brooklyn running, which is where I already have created a Docker infrastructure. That d These are machines running Docker, already pre-installed, pre-configured with security and everything, so you have a place where to run your containers. In addition to that, Brooklyn has, uh, with the help of Clocker, has created a Calico infrastructure. Calico is an SDN. So Docker containers need to see each other between host boundaries, because historically, containers supported only the local networks of hosts, so they couldn't talk to each other directly. You had to do kind of nothing between hosts. But with software, with a software-defined network, you can create one big namespace for all your containers. And we, so we have Docker running somewhere. And I want to create an application running inside that. So what we have here is a straightforward bash entity, which just takes some commands in bash script and executes them on the node. We have install, which we install node.js. It's very really straightforward. We have a launch command, which writes the bit of the process, so Brooklyn can monitor it and see if it's failing. Uh, we also have a Docker Redis image. You just pull that from Docker Hub and say, I want these ports to use Redis. Then wire it up with the bash application by passing the address of 
Docker of the Redis host to it with the Brooklyn DSL I already showed you. So it's really straightforward. We, you have a Docker image on one container and a generic bash script running on the other container talking to the Redis. Let's try it out. This is the Redis container. It's just an image from Docker Hub, so it will pull that down, start it, wait for it, and once it's running, take its address, pass it to the Node.js bash application. Let's see what's going on. Starting and provisioning. This means that it's currently creating the Docker container. So while that's running, I can show you around again. What really matters are the sensors, the effectors, and the policies. And when combined together, you get, you get uh, the functionality to heal applications, to do health checks, to do failure uh, handling and to implement various business rules on your application. So seems that's taking a while. So maybe if you have any questions, I can answer them while we are waiting for that. No? Anything? Yeah. So, not by default, but you, of course, can do that. It's, it's really uh, agile. There's no predefined way to do things with Brooklyn. You can do anything you need it to do. So. It's not really opinion, opinionated in the way things should happen. That's why it can run on from bare metal machines to containers. It can manage software processes. It can manage hardware machines. It can manage even network switches or anything that you can communicate. What configuration you should do to get started with Amazon, for example? How how you set to? Uh, I can show you where, an where your machines on Amazon or something like this. So for Amazon and most providers actually, it's mostly the same. You uh, type in the ID of the cloud provider. For Amazon, it's AWS CC2. You type your identity and credential. That's your private key to access Amazon. Uh, you can specify additional information, like what region you want to run in, and some specific things about the operating system you want, you require of it. And by default, Brooklyn will SSH into the machine with the credentials provided by the cloud provider, and then create a new user with a private key you have specified, and disable the user provided by the cloud provider, so it's more secure in case it leaks somewhere. You can specify a predefined user, or it will create by default the current user it's running under, you can use passwords, you can use private keys, anything that suits you. Uh, it doesn't need to spin up machines. If you have an existing infrastructure with fixed IPs, you can point, point Brooklyn to the machines, give it usernames and private keys, and it will just connect to them. And it can even manage the software that's already running there. So 
it doesn't need to install it first even. That's, for, for example, similar to using platform as a service. Say, in Cloud Foundry, you just want a web container. You don't care how it comes to you, on what machine it's running. You have the container, and Brooklyn can represent that again through its entity with sensors, even though it didn't create it. It doesn't have a connection to the machine. It, it has uh, the IP of the uh, application container, of the web server only. Thanks. So let's see how far did we go. We have the container up, and now the web application is starting. It already provisioned the container for it, and now it's going inside the container and doing its thing. It's just running the commands we specified in the YAML file. So that comes straight from the YAML file. <coughs> Let's see what the output is. It's more slow because I'm using a mobile connection, not relying on the conference Wi-Fi. I guess you know why. <laughs> yeah. So it will take a bit more time to download all that stuff because it's running locally and install it. So that's it from me. Thank you for your attention and I'm open for any other questions you might have. All right, maybe I should just finish with a tagline. What's Apache Brooklyn? It's modeling, monitoring, and managing applications through autonomic blueprints. So when I say that at the beginning, you don't have a really good idea what it means, but when I say it at the end, Maybe it's another thing. So thank you again.